another segment on Secure Set, brought to you by GRA Services. We're here in the middle of Oklahoma, and this is Jerome, he's the homeowner, and what we have is an issue with a uh, set of fiberglass stairs on his swimming pool that we believe, and he believes, that there are hollow spots underneath the steps. Uh, so being that when you step on them, you can, you can feel the flex. So Jerome, uh, let's take a look and see, uh, give it a, a few taps of the hammer so that the audience can see what we're talking about. Yeah, that sounds pretty hollow. Yep. There might be a little bit of a solid spot there, but uh, how about the rim here? Okay. Oh, there you go. It's all hollow. And that basically is what he's told us he's found basically around the entire set of steps. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill some holes in the uh, fiberglass steps. Today we also have the ability to look inside the uh, area because we have a, an endoscope which uh, you can use and, and it's really neat because it sends a little Wi-Fi signal to your cell phone, your iPhone, and then you can actually view uh, what is happening or what has happened um, behind the, uh, the fiberglass steps. So before we get into the next segment, as I've done in the past, I'm going to change my shirt because I don't like getting all of these good clothes <laughs> messy, and so um, we'll get right at it. Well, we're back. Um, got my work shirt on. Got a lot of sun today, so I've got my cool safari hat on. And uh, Jerome, he's going to uh, drill. We're going to probe this because we want to see what this, why this is uh, sounding so hollow and, and uh, basically what the construction is like underneath these steps. So we've pinpointed some spots here on both sides, and so that's what we're going to do first. Go ahead, Jerome. Let's move around to the other side. Let's see what the scope can do. Let's, let's put it in, let's get it in there and see what we can see. Okay, we're going to probe this, drill hole. And well, there's the void right there. You can see it. We're just going to continue to drop this down. We'll see how deep this might be. There's the sand, and obviously it's washed out. And so we're going to pull this up. We're going to give you an indication of how far down the sand has uh, retreated. I'd say it looks to be close to a foot. We're going to probe the other hole over here. And we have a really good idea of what we're up against. Oh yeah, you can see the edge of the concrete there and how it's washed its way around. So basically the same thing is happened. Oh, there we go. Same thing has happened on this side. All right. Now what we've done uh, in the interim is that we've drilled a number of pilot holes to determine basically what's truly underneath these steps. Now, as we had determined uh, and viewed through the endoscope is that this section here on both sides is hollow and it drops down about uh, 12 inches or so. But then we determined that, you know, we needed to hammer sound the rest of the steps. And so the bottom step seemed a little hollow but actually, what we found is this. The bottom step actually has sand right underneath it, but the sand is waterlogged. So we have water right underneath, right underneath the step. So that's okay. Then we're gonna move up to the next one. We probe the next layers uh, with not only the camera, 
But um, you, your wire? Oh, yeah. Jerome had a neat little uh, basic probe, <laughs> and we determined that we have about an inch to two and a half inches, maybe three at the most. The next lever up is hollow, maybe four inches or so. And then obviously we have this, this last piece here. So over the years, the presumption is, is that water from rain and pool activity probably got in around the seams of the steps and gradually over time it either moved or helped compress or both the sand that was under the steps. So what we're going to accomplish today is we're going to put a permanent layer of high density foam under those steps primarily to help with the stability of the substrate or the sand but also we don't want to have any flex on the steps because, that, because you know, over time, uh, that constant flexing of the fiberglass could possibly end up in a, in a crack or a fissure. So next phase is this, which is kind of the fun stuff, is we're going to actually get the kits ready and we have the nozzles already uh, prepped and we're going to start the injection phase. We're going to start the injection phase here. We're going to fill these sides first. I want to form a block on each side and then we're going to uh, uh, move uh, horizontally across the steps to uh, you know fill but what's nice is that as the foam moves it will always travel to the point of least resistance so once it has moved laterally to the left and filled that void as it's also filling the void right we'll be able to see the immersion or not immersion, the ejection of the foam uh, through the, the drill ports. And so we'll move that. And so this phase really doesn't take that long. The foam, the high density foam, will go in as a pre-frost product. It will then expand two to two and a half times its, uh, its, its original volume. So we do have to be a little bit careful because we don't want to over inject these holes. It does have some, you know, pretty good expansive force and it can lift. You know, we've, we've experienced um, projects where we've lifted up significant slabs of concrete. Uh, I remember we did one and we, we tabulated that that particular slab weighed about 6,500 pounds and it was able to, to lift it about two and a half inches. So we don't want to have to, to, you know, redo anything. So we'll be careful and we'll move and um, um, we'll finish it off here in really in not too much time. Okay, next phase to start. Excellent. All right. Okay, we've gone through the preliminaries. We've hammer sounded, got an idea of where the voids might be. We went the next step where we drilled some holes basically to uh, de determine uh, points of application. In some of the holes, we've, we've uh, inserted the um, bore scope or endoscope, and we've actually been able to see and witness the depth of the, of the voids. For example, <clears throat> on these side panels, we had a 12 inches, maybe 14 inches, where the sand has completely settled out from under the stairs. And as we, and on both sides, and as we hammer sounded, it actually sounded like we had a void under all of them, except the bottom step. Bottom step had a little bit of a different sound, and I'll show you what happens. So once we drilled the hole, when we inserted the drill bit, we got sand on the drill bit instantly, meaning that the sand was right underneath the uh, step. But it sounds differently because the sand is waterlogged. So that's why we got a little bit of a different echo. So we know based on the probes and our drilling that we have a good sand fill under the bottom step. Second step, we found that we had a probably ranging an inch to maybe two inches on either side. The third step, three to four inches. And then on the top, uh, it's, it's basically void all the way down to um, you know, the top of the, of the, the 
the top of the top step. So, the procedure, as we've always done in the past, obviously we remove the hoses, we've charged the hoses by turning the valves on that are on the top of the tank. And one thing that's always important, squirt some product in there. We can go a little bit more, yeah. We always want to make sure that we've got a great positive flow. We will reinsert this and we are ready to go. Now I'm going to do the first injection uh, just basically to give you a, a and drum a, a procedural uh, check on it. So we're going to move over here and we're going to do this in, in short shots. We have about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes before whatever's in the nozzle or what's underneath has risen and has started to harden. So we know we just have to keep a constant little smooth flow of product. So we're ready to go. Oh, and we put this black electrician's tape around the tip of the nozzle. That acts as a nice seal on the hole. So we don't want to overfill it. We're never in a hurry, you know. Sometimes you can hear a little bit of a different sound as we're getting closer to the top. Ah, uh, yeah, I can hear it moving uh, laterally. Ah, here it goes, right here. Excellent. We've got foam exiting right here, so we know that we're, we're full. We're going to um, let this harden up. Jerome, can you hold that pressure on that? I, I brought something I'm going to use today. Uh, these are going to act as just sort of temporary plugs. Go ahead and just uh, pick that out. Oh, not going anywhere anyway. Okay, we want to make sure that we still have flow out of that, which we do. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Jerome, you're next. All right. That's a beautiful, that was fantastic. Okay, let me move that box a little bit closer to you. Ready to go? Okay. That little bit of down pressure. Go Keep it coming, yeah. And just hold up just a little bit. Oh, perfect. Okay, one more shot maybe. Excellent, okay. Let's just keep that nozzle in there for a little bit. We can always take that off and put on a new one. I don't want any foam coming out of the hole. So this is wonderful, because take a look at this. We've got great indication that we have foam has filled this, this entire thing. We've got good hard foam that has come up through the, that has come up and uh, made its way out the, the crack. So we've finished, uh, you know, first injections. We've got the, the side panels. Pretty cool. But here's what that's kind of neat. It's kind of uh, self-assuring. You get all these little telltale signs like this. So here's a crack right along the edge. And we were injecting here. We were shooting it straight down. So we know that came back and then filled it here. And then also, ha, huh, you can feel the heat from the expanded foam. You can feel it all the way across the panel right here. So we know that the, the foam has expanded and is setting and it is basically doing its job under there. So we've, we've done what we wanted to do. We've created a dam on either side. And so now we're gonna move down to the steps. And thinking about the process, you know, a gentleman that had done this before had given us some feedback on what was successful for him. He said he actually started on one side and moved his way across. And so since we have already successfully set a dam or a block, I think we're gonna do that. It's always good to learn uh, by experience and feedback. So we're going to start on this side over there and we're gonna inject and we're just gonna move. In theory, <laughs> as the foam expands, it's gonna travel and we're gonna see it come out the next hole. When that happens, we will then stop filling that hole. We will move to the next one or even to the third one and then we will continue the process. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, we're going to go into a second phase of injection, and as before, really a good common practice is make sure you've still got a good flow rate. Very good. 
let's reattach a new mixer and let's I think it would probably be best if you can reach it from here so that your weight won't influence the flex I don't know if you can reach it and down that second hole let's start there yeah mm -hmm. there we go you give, give that about 15 seconds of expansions. Okay, there you go. Oh, a little different sound. There it goes. Oh, <laughs> cool. All right, we know where we are. All right. Coming a little? A little bit. Here, let me see if I can do that just temporarily. There we go. All right, let's get a little bit of a, let's, let's blow that tip out. Excellent. All right, oh yeah, excellent. So yeah, let's go to the next one, uh-huh. Okay, let me wipe the tip off and I want you to do a little uh, cleansing spurt here. A little bit more. Okay, so we've moved now to this final hole, and we really have to have our ears tuned to that uh, expanding and gurgling sound as it moves up uh, to meet the end of the step. So, go ahead. Here we go. Give it about a three-second shot. That's hard. I think we're done here. So we met the we met the barrier right there. Fantastic. All right. Oh yeah, we're definitely. Good. We're good. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, we're up step number three, and we're gonna follow the same procedure. Oh, remember this one was four inches. Yeah, this is a little deeper. Yeah. Yeah, let's just let it set. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Because we know that's full. It is fantastic. Actually, I want you to I want you to, to go in here. Yeah. No, oh, look, 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 it's right here. Fantastic. Okay, just let us let us sit. Let's just Oh good. Ah, perfect. Okay, uh all right. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's take a break. It's very important that when you're gonna take a break that you take the time to dress the end of the gun, reset the safety, wipe this really, really well, get all the crud out of there. I actually have a little knife here. I'm gonna just, yeah, that's real good. Okay. The reason is, is that this really keeps the function of these orifices working really well. And to protect it in each kit, you have this little pack of Vaseline or petroleum jelly, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, just extrude a small amount like this and seal the end and that will keep all the air away from it and you won't have any contamination of the end of the gun. Okay, another thing, when you're in break, do not depressurize the, the lines. Do not turn the valves off. All right, we're gonna take a short break. We've taken a little break. It's, it is the middle of the summer in Oklahoma. A little toasty, but we're ready to go. But in the interim, what's neat is that the, all the foam under the steps has solidified. 
we have no more flexing. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna finish this off. And we know the foam has traveled probably to here. So I don't know if we need to, that's kind of, we need to drill a hole there. But I think we should drill a couple of holes across here. We're gonna finish off the top and then basically we'll be done. So, draw if you want. And let me move this out of your way. I mean, let me just hammer sound this. That's not so hollow anymore. Okay, that is. I think we should drill right here in the corner. Okay. And you know what? I think we'll use the same methodology. We'll drill and we'll work our way around. Okay, let's do it. So I'd say probably right there in the corner. Here? Yes. Okay, another one on this side, maybe here and then right about here. Okay, good flow there. All right, let's do it. Oh, it's all ready, yeah. Pretty cool. Ah, there we go. Ready? Cool, all right. We got a flow going now. Well, there's no deformation on the wall at all. It's perfect. Oh, there it goes. Ha <laughs> ha. We got it. Okay. Okay. Give it a couple more shots. Let it push it a little bit more. Whoops. Here, let's just get a new nozzle. Let's get it. Let that set. What you have to do, because you might want to use this for something else some other time, take the nozzle off. Clean that off really well. Yep. Clean that off really well. And let's see if we can dig a little bit of that crud out of there, right? There. Oh, that came out perfect. Okay, let me go like this. Is that silicone? Mm -hmm. uh, it's just petroleum jelly. That's it. Okay. We have come to the conclusion, really, of another really neat project. I get enthused about it because it, it brings such um, opportunity to the homeowner to do something that isn't a, you know, a, a significant financial investment. So what we've been able to accomplish, now we arrived here at about 10 a.m. It is now 1.15, so that's three hours and 15 minutes. So if you factor in all the time that we did with instruction and dialogue and we even took a break, honestly, if you had come out here to do this on your own, you could probably do it in about two hours. So it's finished. So let's try it out. Let's try it out, yes. <laughs> let's see what happened here. So before we had a lot of flex in here, you could feel the flex when you stepped on it and this is just absolutely solid. So we solved the problem was I talked to pool people about it because uh, I've been working on my pool. They put some liner and they've done a bunch of stuff for me. So I asked them about the steps and they said, well, that's a real problem. Uh, they don't make those steps anymore. Uh, and to get a brand new set, it'd probably be $7,500 just for the steps, not counting labor and everything else to put them in. So this is a significant advantage over whatever other alternatives you might have for repairing the steps. One of the things that is not seen underneath the steps is that this is really high density 
closed cell foam. All the access points around the steps have now been sealed. So the water that was once moving in there and compacting and moving the sand away, you, it can't move it. You, you cannot move the, the, the foam. Additionally, this foam has phenomenal adhesion. So anything that it comes in contact with where it actually then dries and sets is, is, is stuck for good. So the completion of the project will, would be to uh, just take away some of the small amounts of foam, you know, obviously uh, remove the dowels and smooth them over. Um, you mentioned that you're going to have this uh, bottom part uh, refiberglass, correct? So, yes, so we'll have to fiberglass these steps. We were gonna have to do that anyway because the stop top step is cracked in a couple of places. And so um, we're gonna fiberglass, but that's pretty, pretty minimal considering uh, how much we've saved on how to have to replace the steps. So we can put a new fiberglass top on these steps and uh, they're gonna be like brand new steps. Well, it's been a great day. Thank you, Doug. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to bring another really neat uh, use and application of secure set spray foam to the market. Again, we're in pool step restoration. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.